Hi everybody, welcome to Bama Blonde. I'm Beverly and today you can see in the title, I think that I'm gonna talk about a guide dog team. In my case, it's Gretchen, my guide dog, who's a German Shepherd, she's four years old, and me, and when we go out and about. And so many times, if you're a guide dog user, if you're a guide dog part of the team, you realize that so many times when you go into the public, almost every encounter is a teachable moment because somebody's gonna ask you something about your dog or they're gonna comment on your dog or they might attempt to pet your dog or they might ask you questions uh, about just dogs in general, general or your breed of dog. Gretchen is a German Shepherd, like I said, and so many times I get questions and comments about the breed and I'm not a dog expert, although I've learned a lot over the last four years that Gretchen and I have worked together. But today I'm gonna to talk about the times when you go out when it's not appropriate for me to be teaching the public uh, just in any encounter as to how, how the public should interact with a guide dog. That's very rare because so many times, like I said, I'm eager to, to share my knowledge and the public's general response to guide dogs. But I'm gonna kind of uh, tell a little story about a week and a half ago. It's a true story and it is like, I, I, I couldn't have videoed it because of where the setting was, but had I videoed it, it would have been the perfect video to show at any guide dog school about what the public doesn't need to do around a guide dog. It, it's just, it's almost comical, and I had to just strike it up as a, a learning experience for me because I kept my mouth shut, and it was not a teachable moment. So let me set this story up. It's not a long story, it's just very interesting. Um, I accompanied a family member to the doctor's office and this family member was really, really sick, just, you know, really, really sick. And as um, somebody that's very close to me, I said, let me go with you because you're so sick. I'm not even sure if you can talk to the nurse or talk to the doctor. And I, I certainly have seen your sickness and I know what's going on. So I went with, uh, it, it's a her. I went with uh, this family member to the doctor and uh, signed in, helped her sign in. I walked in with Gretchen and Gretchen knows where, when I say let's find the counter, uh, we found the counter. And then my family member helped me and Gretchen find a chair because there were a lot of people in the waiting room and lots of them were coughing and hacking and things. And we were sitting off to ourselves and I was just trying to attend to my family member because she was really, really sick. Um, and immediately people in the waiting room started yelling across the waiting room, asking me questions about, oh, what a beautiful dog. And I guess you're not supposed to pet her. And I was just saying, yes, that's correct. You're not supposed to pet her. But I wasn't getting too loud because I just didn't want to detract from my family member who I was sitting there kind of holding her hand because she was weak and didn't feel well. Um, so then we were called back eventually, called back into the back where I assumed we would go into a room uh, to see the doctor and it wasn't her regular doctor, it wasn't my regular doctor, it was kind of an urgent care situation. And as we walked be beyond the waiting room um, and were following the nurse that was leading us back, another patient who was standing in the hallway where we were walking uh, just turned around and looked and saw Gretchen and screamed bloody murder and jumped about 10 feet. And then she hid behind a curtain and I could hear the curtain being drawn. So I knew she was hiding behind the curtain and I heard another uh, employee say, that's a service dog, it's well trained. And this patient was behind the curtain and when the, um, 
when the employee said that, I said, yes, she is very well trained and we're just following this nurse here, trying to downplay any interaction and trying to let Gretchen not react to this person that just screamed and jumped out of the way. Now, because this hallway was about 10 feet wide, it had a wheelchair in, in the hallway. It had two like sitting plastic chairs where people could sit. It had a scales where people stand up and get weighed. And then each little exam ante room where they take your blood pressure and stuff was curtained off with a like a shower curtain. Um, but those weren't the exam rooms. They were just where you go back and do the initial questionnaire. And my family member had asked me to please keep holding her hand so that she wouldn't get too weak and please accompany her into the room because she wasn't sure if she could even answer questions. So the nurse took, she said, we need to find a chair for um, the person with a guide dog. And so my family member said, well, I want her to come in with me. And she said, well, there's, there's a chair right out here. And if you could lead her over there. And of course, at that point, instead of saying, Gretchen, let's find a chair. We already were in the middle of a very crowded area and we had a, um, a person hiding from us basically behind the curtain. So I said, okay, let, 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 uh, my family member lead us to a chair. There are no mistakes there. Gretchen's not sniffing around for an empty chair and you know us finding our way. So I sat down in a chair assuming that my family member would sit next to me, but there were no chairs next to me. So then the nurse motioned so that I could not see, motioned to the family member that was very sick to come with me. She, she did her little finger come here and so the family member went with her and she shut the curtain. And of course they were like 10 feet away from me. And my family member had asked me to come in with her. And I heard the nurse say, I'm deathly afraid of dogs. I, I just, I'm gonna be in here with you, but I'm afraid of dogs. So I'm just gonna have them sit out there. And I'm sitting there listening to this because you know, one thing about us visually impaired people, our, our hearing is very keen. And I could hear all the questions that she was asking my family member. Um, and I could hear her take her blood pressure, uh, but there was just a curtain between them and me. And uh, as if, and she whispered, you know, I, I, she whispered beneath her breath that I'm scared of dogs and I just, I don't want to be in here with you with the dog in here. Um, and so I just let it ride because I could have said, wait, you can't, you know, not, not provide a service because you are afraid of a dog. That's what I usually do. And I've done that before, but I didn't do that this in this case because I wasn't the patient. I was there to be a support to my family member and I didn't want to make anything any more uh, anxiety provoking than it already was. So I just sat quietly, I did what they said, and I heard the, what the lady said and I understood she was very afraid of dogs. Then they both came out of that room and said, let's go to an exam room. And the lady did very well with um, fighting back her fears. And I just quietly allowed Gretchen to follow. Um, and I told, I told the lady that she's just going to follow you, but we're not going to get too close. And then when we get to the doorway, we'll just go inside. And so we did. We went inside of the exam room where we, um, the nurse that was deathly afraid of dogs came in and sat across from me. I was sitting in a chair and the patient was sitting on the exam table and she really was sick. So I kept watching to make sure she was okay and not getting lightheaded or getting faint or anything like that. And um, then calmly the nurse, you know, started asking me questions about Gretchen. And I thought that was marvelous because she was fighting back her own fear. And she was also asking me very good questions. And then she said to me, and I'm really afraid of dogs but I know that's a service dog. And so I'm just calming myself down. And I thought, that's awesome. I didn't have to interject myself 
into that situation for it to be a teaching moment. So she left us and said, the doctor will be in here in just a little second. So we waited quietly and I was giving my family members some support and I was sitting quiet in the chair and I had shoved Gretchen underneath the chair, which is what we usually do to get her big body out of the way. And she shoved, she goes down uh, with her chin on the floor and then I kind of tuck her, leave her harness on her, which sticks up off of her back. And then that gets shoved underneath the chair and very carefully, but she's easy to slide on the tile floor, all 70 pounds of her. So I slide her under the, the chair and then she rests her chin usually right on top of my foot which is right in front of the chair resting on the floor so that's how we usually are and we were that way and then bam 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 the doctor comes in and so many times Gretchen has been alerted because the bam 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 the knocking on the door and then suddenly someone bursting into the room um, alarms Gretchen but in this case, she was under the chair and she was kind of behind my legs and the doctor did not even look at the patient who was sitting on the table. The doctor looked straight over at me and looked down at Gretchen and came walking over and almost reached down to pet Gretchen's head, which was the only thing sticking out. And he said, oh, oh, I just want to pet your, your belly. And I said, well, she's working now. And I kept my feet straight as I could. And I said, she's working now, you can't really pet her. And he said, oh, I can't pet her? And I said, well, no, she's a working dog and right now she's working. And he said, oh, okay. And so he goes and sits in the chair, still doesn't attend to the patient that's sitting on the exam table right next to me. He goes across the room and sits in the chair and then he looks at Gretchen, he said, oh, it's all I can do to not run across the room and pet you. And I said, well, you're really not supposed to look at her eyes either. And you know, if you've seen some of my videos before, I had an incident about six months ago where uh, I was in another setting and someone looked directly into Gretchen's eyes and Gretchen growled. And um, it, it freaked me out because Gretchen reacted to that person staring right at her. So I'm telling this doctor, please don't look in her eyes because that's really an aggressive move for a dog that you know is her breed, a German Shepherd. And I said, I've been in contact with my training facility that trained the CEI and they explained, you know, you can't really breed that out of a German Shepherd. She's gonna be protective. Well, then he said to me, still not seeing the patient, he says to me, well, my dogs, I have dogs. And I look at them all the time. And they don't care if I look in their eyes, I look at them all the time. And I'm trying my best not to make this visit about my dog. He has yet to even look at the patient. So I said, well, those are your dogs and you are the alpha in the pack. I assume, and this is my dog, and I'm the alpha. So yes, I can look in her eyes if I can make eye contact, but she does tend to get protective if someone looks directly into her eyes. And he sat there for a minute and he said, I'm just, I've just never heard of that before. And I said, well, I'm here um, with my family member to to kind of help answer any of her questions. And I had to redirect the entire conversation to the family member who was so sick that she could have passed out at any moment. She was extremely sick. So I thought to myself, this is absolutely ludicrous. Here's, you know, and he finally examines the patient and he goes out to get a prescription pad and when, he, when he's left, I apologize to my family member saying, I know this is not anything about Gretchen. There should never have been any discussion about Gretchen. But I was so afraid she would start growling because he was doing an aggressive behavior, sitting across the room, staring right into her face as she is trying to be as good as possible and staying away from all the people. So not every time that you go out, not every encounter can you make 
your guide dog experience a teaching moment. There are so many times that I have, I've been out in a store and a child will ask a question and the best questions seem to come from children. Uh, but this was absolutely uncalled for. We had a patient jump out of the way and hide behind a curtain. And I can understand she was, she, that the last thing she thought she would see as a patient probably was a, a dog, you know, coming into her space. So I can understand that. Um, I can understand uh, anybody's fear and I wasn't there as the patient. So I thought, okay, I will sit quietly in this waiting chair, waiting, even though my family member wanted me in the room, but it was the nurse's fear of my dog that didn't allow for that. But I wasn't the patient, so I wasn't gonna stir up a big um, confrontation, you know, that no, you can't disallow me from coming in here with my um, loved one, because first of all, we weren't even 10 feet away and I could hear everything. So I was ready to interject if there had been a, an issue with my family member where I knew she needed me to help her. So, and then the third and final thing was the doctor's behavior and uh, my loved one thought, well, goodness, I would think that being in patient care, there would have been some um, training as to when, so, you know, when a, when a person that has a disability and a service dog, service dog comes in, you, you know how to interact with that animal because you rarely see an animal in a patient care room. So you would think that that would be something, but this doctor evidently had never interacted with a guide dog. Um, it's totally different, totally different. Not two days later, I was in another medical setting with another family member and the, the doctor in that setting said, I've got five patients that have uh, guide dogs. And he said, and I know that you're not supposed to interact with them in the least, so I'm not even gonna look at her, I'll look at you and the patient, because I was there with, with another family member. Um, it, it was a lighter setting though, because, because this family member wasn't just really, really, really sick. It was a consultation. So this doctor, it was like night and day, and this doctor said, um, you know, I've, I've had a patient that had the guide dog in the hospital room when I was tending to the patient who had had surgery and I was the surgeon and I came in to check on the blind patient and the guide dog was in there and I told the, uh, he very, very jokingly said, I, uh, I told this patient that I'll be, I'll be in every day to see you twice a day if you will let me pet your guide dog while you're in the hospital. So that was a mutual agreement. And you can hear Gretchen, and that means that it's time for me to go. She wanted me to tell you this, this, it's not a funny story. It's really sad that more professionals don't know more about guide dogs and interaction. But as a team, you can't always use every encounter as a teachable moment, even if you want to, sometimes it's just not appropriate. So thanks for sticking with me. And if you have any questions at all about teachable moments, or if you wanna comment about your experiences with a guide dog or a team, please do so. If you're not visually impaired and you're just watching this and you wanna know more about what is appropriate, let me know and I'll do, I'll be happy to do a, just a, a video about you know, just everything that I know from my training about how the public should interact with a guide dog and a guide dog team. So hopefully this has been kind of informative and if nothing else, thought provoking and have a really, really safe and happy upcoming week, everybody. Bye-bye.